Hello and welcome to Press TV Spotlight. I'm Marzia Hashimi. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, Iran's President Ibrahim Raisi has uh, started his three-country Latin American tour. First stop is Venezuela, where the two countries are increasing their already warm relations to even greater cooperation in a range of various fields, from agriculture to medicine. Now, the fall of the unipolar world becomes more obvious every day as we watch the multipolar powers enhance relations with like-minded nations. In the case of Iran and these countries, the Iranian president is visiting Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Cuba. All of these countries have been victims of U.S. imperialism and coercive measures and are greatly motivated to strengthen their relations in the face of Washington's illegal measures. Well, we're going to take a closer look at all of this on this spotlight, but first, let's take a look at this package. Iranian President Ebrahim Raisi has visited the Venezuelan capital, Caracas, on the first leg of a three-nation Latin American tour. He's heading a high-ranking delegation, including ministers of foreign affairs, oil, defense, health and culture. Raisi has described the two countries' relations as strategic, adding that a new world order is being shaped in favor of independent, freedom-seeking nations. The relationship between Iran and Venezuela is not a normal diplomatic relationship. It is a strategic relationship in which the two countries have common interests and common visions. We also have common enemies. With both Iran and Venezuela under heavy U.S. sanctions, Raisi added that the two nations are determined to boost their trade volume from the current $3 billion a year to $20 billion. The leaders also announced the signing of 25 accords in such fields of information and communications technology, energy, petrochemicals, maritime transportation, agriculture, medicine, mining and culture. The Venezuelan president, Nicolas Maduro, for his part, stressed that Tehran and Caracas have made efforts to increase the resistance of their economies against foreign upheaval and pressure. We are on the right side of history and together we will be invincible. Iran and Venezuela, which are considered to be the original founders of OPEC in the 60s, have maintained close relations since the government of the late President Hugo Chavez. Maduro, who became president in 2013 after Chavez's death, has promoted trade relations with Iran, China, Russia and Turkey to try and overcome the impacts of the economic sanctions. Iran has helped alleviate parts of a fuel shortage in Venezuela, particularly since 2020. The principles of independent states, the principles of resistance are crossing those cultures and we're seeing some actual fruits of it. Already those benefits are in place between Iran and Venezuela. There's a motor vehicle industry there. There's cooperation in energy, in finance, in defense um, and in heavy, heavy industry. So I think that um, we're likely to see some new fruits out of this new strategic partnership. In June last year, Iran hosted the Venezuelan president and the two countries signed a 20-year strategic cooperation document. The Islamic Republic's national interests can be divided into four categories, security and defense, economic and welfare, ideological and the new world order. The relationship between Tehran and Caracas is one of the few foreign relations in Iran's contemporary history that includes all four of the country's national interests. Interests. The Iranian president will be visiting Nicaragua and Cuba as well. Tehran has time and again stressed the common values it shares with these independent Latin American countries, especially in fighting hegemony and unilateralism. Given the expansion and cementing of Iran's relations with these countries, observers argue Latin America no longer serves as the U.S. backyard. I'd like to welcome my guests to the program, Fouad Ezadi, professor of the University of Tehran and political analyst out of Tehran. And Arnold August, author and journalist. 
out of Montreal. Well, thank you both for being with me. I'd like to start this off in Tehran with uh, Fouad Izadi. How significant is it that Iran's uh, warming relations go beyond regional countries and is increasingly looking eastward and southward in cementing strategic relations? You know, the, uh, with the case of Venezuela, uh, Iran is actually looking westwards. Uh, as you know, Venezuela is in the, uh, the continent, American continent. And uh, this is uh, what uh, Mr. Reis's foreign policy uh, was uh, all about, to work with the countries that like to work with Iran. And Venezuela is obviously one of the, these countries. Uh, you know, the, the case of Venezuela is important because Venezuela uh, holds uh, an important uh, place, uh, an important position when it comes to uh, uh, Latin American resistance uh, towards uh, American aggression and American imperialism. Uh, so you have a lot of people, different parties, different groups, NGOs, that uh, gather in Caracas uh, every year, uh, and uh, there's a network of uh, people, intellectuals, writers, uh, university professors uh, that uh, uh, look uh, to Venezuela as a country that's resisting uh, pressures from the United States. And Iran does the same thing in uh, West Asia. Uh, so when these two countries uh, are cooperating, uh, they are basically connecting the uh, resistance people in West Asia with the people who are resisting uh, American aggression in Latin America. And that, I think, is more important than economic linkages or technology transfer or uh, other uh, issues that deal with economy. Of course, economy is important. Uh, the two countries' uh, relations will improve economic conditions for both people. But I think what's more important is the fact that uh, people who are not uh, of the same religion, you know, uh, people in Venezuela are generally Christians, uh, people in Iran are uh, mainly Muslims, uh, but they share the value of resisting uh, American hegemony. And I think that's very important to connect uh, West Asia and Latin America in that resistance. Okay, interesting point uh, that uh what has made Arno your take? I mean, connecting well the global South and, and West Asia. I want to talk about the significance and the importance of this, especially when we look at the role of Iran and, and Venezuela and, and what each one can gain from strengthened relations between each other. Well, I think if one uh, takes into account the fact that in February 2022, uh, the Biden's uh, main advisor for Latin America and Caribbean, Juan Gonzalez, said that one of the goals of the United States in carrying out sanctions against Russia after the special military operation in February 2022, and he said this literally, it is also to punish Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Cuba. So here we are, a little over a year later, and far from punishing Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua, you have the opposite taking of, sure, they suffered as a result of the sanctions, but now you have a very significant move on the part of Iran to visit those very three countries, Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua, that only a year ago, the Biden administration vowed that they will destroy their relationship with uh, Iran and also very significantly hurt their political and economic system. So it's very, very significant. Well, for uh, it, Iran and Venezuela are both countries which are revolutionary and have had to fight long and hard against American hegemony. Um, what do you think these countries actually uh, can teach other countries trying to get from under the cloak of American imperialism? Well, I think that I think, uh, the obvious that, That's for Tehran. That's for Fouad. Stay with me, uh, oh, Arnold. Okay. okay, sorry. You know, I think uh, the first lesson is that it's possible to resist uh, American pressure. 
the second lesson is that you can actually advance while you're resisting. And the third lesson is that when you have this type of networks and cooperations, you can do the first and second in a more concrete way, in a better way. And uh, this is what you see when you look at Iran and Venezuela cooperation. You know, Iran is more advanced in terms of technology. Uh, and Iran has been helping uh, the people of Venezuela with regard to electricity, with regard to uh, other uh, industries that uh, uh, were under American sanctions. The, uh, Venezuela's oil industry is uh, benefiting from the Iranian engineering expertise. Uh, there is a lot of uh, help coming from Iran in terms of uh, medical supplies and medical uh, equipment. Uh, Iran is uh, building cars. You know, I have visited Caracas uh, two or three times, and it's interesting when you uh, go around the city, you see Iranian cars, Samand, uh, which our Iranian uh, uh, audience knows it's, it's an Iranian-made car, uh, available in uh, Caracas, and uh, people are driving it. Uh, so, um, you know, Iran helped uh, Venezuela's uh, airline to fix uh, problems with the uh, airplanes because Iran has been under sanctions actually longer than Venezuela has been. So Iran has developed this capacity to go around sanctions, to uh, have the technology that's needed to be self-sufficient. Uh, and uh, Venezuela is a rich country. It has the, it's number one in terms of oil reserves. And it, that's why the United States wants to uh, take over that country and, and control the resources of that country. And I think the people of Venezuela have realized that uh, uh, the government that's resisting U.S. pressure is the government that they want, and Iran is uh, willing and able to help. Obviously, this is beneficial for Iran because Iran is also under sanctions and uh, working with countries that are willing to uh, work with Iran is going to be important, but as I said, more important than these economic or technological transfers is, is the fact that there is this solidarity uh, among uh, the people who are resisting American pressure, and that could be a model to other people in the world. Mm. Well, <clears throat> Arno, how important is it that an increasing number of countries are forming strategic alliances and learning to counter American unilateralism, and how likely is it that Washington will be, get even more aggressive as this trend towards a multipolar world increases? Yeah, I think that uh, you, you use, you know, what you say as, uh, you know, indicating that the United States is they're going to become very desperate. While there's a lot of advances, advances in the world scale against the U.S. hegemonic system uh, being replaced step by step by multipolarity, uh, relations uh, between uh, the global South and other regions of the world against US, he U.S. hegemony, I don't think we can expect the United States to take this line down. They're bound to try other uh, things in order to try to destabilize, destabilize the whole situation. One most recent example, just in the last few days, this one against China and Cuba, Cuba also going to be visited by the Iranian president in a few days. They floored this a completely false notion, a lie, that China established a spy base in Cuba to spy on neighboring United States. Completely false. Uh, uh, but they fabricated. But that, you know, that indicates what you're saying. They're losing the war to maintain their hegemony, but they are not going to get they're not going to give it up peacefully. And I think I would like to add one other thing, in addition to what the, uh, our colleague uh, said with regards to the relationship between what is in common between Venezuela and Iran, it's obvious the most important common feature is their long-standing struggle against U.S. imperialism, U.S. hegemony, against the attempt by the United States to uh, to impose a regime change against the respective governments in Venezuela and uh, Iran. But, uh, for example, there are a lot of similar similarities in terms of social. It's not as well known. For example, we know that Venezuela, they call their system a socialist Bolivarian revolution. At the same time, in Iran, 
the, the Iran also plays an important role in establishing a social system with regards to education and health. Now, there's a lot of talk about and this recent agreement that is taking place in Caracas about the export of Iranian products, Iranian agricultural products to Venezuela. Now, how can this be done? You know that 98% of the agriculture land or the farmers are in private hands. At the same time, what I read in a news report yesterday from Iran, while this is the case, Iran has taken up the task of working with us 98% of private farmers to make sure that the production, the prices, the balance between domestic consumption and exportation is kept with, uh, in a reasonable way so that it serves the overall system, it serves the Iranian people. So it's, you know, they have a social system as well. And I remember very clearly when the president uh, of Iran was in the uh, United Nations or another representative uh, about a half, six months ago. His first thing that he said when he spoke to the United Nations, he said, capitalism is not moral. We are looking for a more moral system. And, you know, there, there are quite a few uh, similarities, not just opposition to U.S. imperialism. And, and I think uh, I think one of the things that I really liked about this current visit, if you don't mind me give you another example, is that we have Maduro meeting with the, his, his Iranian counterpart, but you also have what you call, and they call in Venezuela the uh, first fighter or the first lady in Venezuela meeting with the first lady of Iran with a group of women to discuss things. So you see, it's a very clever way to, as well to undo the vicious propaganda against Iran, that it's against women and all that. So you have common ground, uh, people discussing amongst themselves, in this case, women discussing amongst themselves uh, what, uh, you know, how they see the future and things like that. So there's a lot of common features. And I'm very happy that one of the announcements that came out uh, of, of uh, Caracas is they probably going to start uh, regular flights between Tehran and Caracas, which will be really good because this will provide an opportunity for both the Iranian people and the Venezuelan people to know each other. In okay. fact, it actually happened. Sorry. Okay. Stay with me, Arno. Uh, well, Fouad, Arno mentioned a couple of things. One I want to pick up on when he talked about uh, one of the things that these two countries have in common, of course, is that they both have been uh, fighting U.S. imperialism and have been victims to it. Do you think that the U.S. aggressive actions in general against these countries have in fact formed, uh, been a catalyst in actually expediting um, these ties and, and creating stronger ties? And, and if this is the case, do we see more and more of this in this multipolar world as the majority of countries or many countries in the world have been a victim to U.S. hegemony? You know, uh, this is something quite interesting that uh, if it wasn't for the U.S. pressure on both Iran and Venezuela, given the distance between the two countries, these uh, two countries would not be cooperating at the level that we see today. So the aim of the United States is to isolate both Iran and Venezuela, but in practice, uh, the linkage between West Asia and Latin America is increasing because we have uh, the foolish people in Washington that are designing things against uh, the people of these two countries, but in reality, they're actually helping these countries to connect with each other and help each other. And I think, uh, given the fact that you know Iran's Islamic Revolution uh, is, uh, in terms of ideas, is similar to what we see in Venezuela. In Latin America, we have this movement for liberation theology. The, the, the theologians that are uh, concerned about social justice and are fighting uh, 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 the dictatorships that existed before in their countries. And this is what we had in Iran. We had clerics that uh, opposed the Shah, opposed the um, American presence in Iran. Uh, so there are a lot of similarities between how uh, the, the, the intellectuals in these two countries think and uh, how uh, they manage to resist the pressures that they are uh, uh, experiencing. Uh, and uh, th this is the beginning of the uh, uh, multipolar world. 
where uh, the United States and uh, former colonial powers in Europe are uh, losing their control uh, and uh, the countries that are resisting are uh, actually helping each other. I think what's important with regard to Venezuela is that for some years, uh, both Chinese and Russian governments were uh, hesitant to help the Venezuelan government. And it was Iran that was actually helping Venezuela more than any other country uh, for some time. Uh, why Russians and Chinese decided not to help Venezuela uh, at that time, at the level that was needed, that, that's maybe the uh, subject for another program. But the fact that Iran stood by Venezuela at the time that Venezuela was experiencing the harshest uh, pressures from the United States is something that Venezuelan leaders, I think, will remember for many years. Okay. And unfortunately, we're out of time, but I appreciate both of you being with me on this spotlight. Fouad is the professor, University of Tehran, and political analyst out of Tehran and out of Montreal, Arnold Agas, author and journalist. Thanks a lot. And thank you, viewers, for being with us on another Spotlight. I'm Marzia Hashmi, signing off for myself and all the crew right here in Tehran. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.